let's talk about fabric shopping and choosing the perfect fabric for your next sewing project. Hey, my name is Courtney. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to walk you through my process of choosing fabric and what I look for, what I kind of stay away from, what fabrics and materials that I'm gravitating towards, and how I can pick out the perfect fabric in a sea of fabrics at maybe like a big box store or online. So throughout this video, I'm mainly talking about fabrics that you want to make a garment that you're going to wear. Really speak to shopping at bigger box stores because I know that's what is available to many people and so I'm first going to start talking about these bigger stores and then I'll start talking about where I buy fabric online and some tips. So a big tip is to go to the store so you can go to Hobby Lobby or Joann's or whatever fabric store you have locally especially if you have a local run business that would be ideal. Unfortunately, we don't have one of those in Tulsa right now. So I go to Joanne Fabrics and Hobby Lobby and I go there and try to find the more natural materials. You really get better at it the more you go and kind of start buying and associating yourself with different fabrics. So since we're talking about clothing, I really look for materials like cotton gauze, thicker fleeces or knits that are made out of organic materials like bamboo. And I also look for rayon, which is derived for a plant. And when I can't find a 100% cotton or linen in a print or pattern or color that I like, I look for a blend of these and you can really find these. They're popular in big stores like Joanne or Hobby Lobby. They're a little bit more cost effective and they're still a great option. They wash well and a good tip is if you find a fabric and it's just a little bit too thick or it's a little bit too stiff, you can wash it and the more you wash it and kind of care for it, then it will soften up and get that really lived in feel that you're probably looking for. And denim is also made out of cotton and something to look for is if it has a stretch to it. You can look on the tag and if it has like spandex on it, it means that's a little stretchy. So you'll actually want to sew this and treat it like you're sewing a stretch knit fabric. So that would just mean you need to use a different stitch and a different needle. The best way to associate yourself with the fabrics that you like and the fabrics you like to wear is first you can go through your closet and if you have any of those items that just stand out that you really love, I would look for the care tag and see what it was made out of and just take note of that and look for those same materials when you're going shopping. And then another way you can associate yourself with fabrics that you love is going to a larger fabric store and instead of just looking for the print that you like, go straight for the apparel section and start to read the tags and see what the materials are made out of and see what the material feels like in your hands, if it's see-through, if it has a nice drape, which means that when it's falling and falling on the body, it, it has a flow to it. So I also love to look for a drape because not all of the things that I make, I want to drape to it. Sometimes I want it to be a thicker fabric, have more structure and it will be like a more dramatic look. And if it has more of a drape and it will flow when you walk, which is really nice. If you find a fabric that you just love and you know will make a beautiful garment, but you're a little nervous about the sewing process, I would recommend making a toile which is basically testing out your pattern before making the end result and using that nicer fabric. So you can buy a cheaper fabric which could be made out of muslin and usually it's just a couple dollars a yard. And you could also use this out of like a sheet that you got at the thrift store or something that you already have on hand that you're not necessarily going to use or wear. But this is a great way to associate yourself with the sewing process before you use that fabric that you invested in. So you can get great fabric at a larger, uh, you just have to be able to kind of put a filter on what you're looking for. This isn't to say you can't branch out, but I always love the end result of a garment so much more when it's a fabric that I can see myself wearing, that I see myself just grabbing and 
wanting to throw on because it's comfortable to me and it's in that color range that I love to wear. So you do wanna shop in the apparel section of the store, but I will say you should also branch out and just see if anything catches your eye. I would take note of what it's made out of, how it feels in your hand, and also how wide the bolt is. Here's how to read the tag on a bolt of fabric. First, you're going to just take note of what it's made out of. You'll find the width of the fabric, the care instructions, and how many yards are on the bolt. But what you mainly wanna take note of is the width, and you'll want to see with your pattern that you're using, the widest cut of a pattern that you'll need. So for example, the Betty dress that we have, depending on the type of fabric you're using, you're gonna want a wider bolt because the bottom tier is a wide cut of fabric. And say you have a 42 inch bolt of fabric, you'll have to cut that tier separately and just do an extra seam in the middle to join this tier together. You'll just want to a lot more yards. So when you go to cut your fabric, I would cut at least half a yard extra. Some things to take note of is the grain line. So especially if you're buying a striped fabric or something with a pattern, you want to take note of what the selvage edge and the grain line is. So the selvage edge is the manufactured edge on the side of your fabric. And this is just gonna show you where the natural stretch of the material is. So when you line it up to your pattern, you're going to cut it along where it's parallel to the selvage edge. And this is so that when it is worn, it drapes very nicely and kind of contours the body as it should. And I've made the mistake before of buying a fabric and thinking it was a vertical stripe, but it was really horizontal. When I cut it out, it just, it was stiff. It wasn't going with the body. It just looked weird and it did not feel comfortable to wear. This could also apply to different floral fabrics or just different patterns. So let's move on to talking about thrift stores and what to look for. I love thrift stores because the fabrics there, you can already see how they're wearing and how probably already been washed. And so you can see these fabrics that are even getting better with age or maybe not. So that would maybe determine if you're gonna purchase the fabric or not. So for example, I went shopping and I found this denim tablecloth and there were three of them. And that is a ton of fabric for $4 each. So this could make not only a dress, it could make overalls for my baby. I could use this in so many ways. So when you're shopping at a thrift store, when you go to the section with like tablecloths or duvet covers or curtains, you're going to get so much more fabric for your dollar. So this is a great idea to find those vintage already worn in fabrics and you can also look in the apparel section and especially if you're making clothes for children you can look in the dresses or the pants and you can find more fabric that can be used for children's clothes because there's that extra fabric there some online stores i love to shop at for fabrics include blackbird fabrics needleworks Spoonflower, and I also look on Etsy. So taking the same things I was talking about earlier about shopping in the store, making sure the material is good and making sure the width of the bolt is sufficient for your project, and also just reading the description and even looking at product photo reviews is helpful when shopping online. A major con I've kind of run into is just the tones of colors being a little off. I would also make sure you're just reading the return policy and just know from the beginning the color on your screen is going to vary a little different from the fabric in real life. So I would take that into account when ordering. I usually shop online just using filters and shopping by fabric type and color. That can kind of filter through the fabrics much quicker, especially if I'm looking on Etsy. I just look for linen fabrics and even specialty fabrics like a waffle knit or a ribbed knit. I love finding these online. I would just make sure you're double checking the descriptions and everything I mentioned earlier. I'm going to leave you with two more tips and the first one is to sew through your fabric stash. I think as makers we just love to have new materials and when you find something 
you just want to buy it and you don't really have a project in mind but thinking through what you're gonna make before you buy something is first of all helpful for how many yards you'll need and it's also helpful to know that you're not wasting anything and it's not just gonna gather dust at the back of your fabric cabinet I've heard it said that the most sustainable thing you can do is to sew through your fabric stash so I'm always working through that and any fabric you don't have, I think it's a great idea to maybe join a fabric swap or sell it secondhand or even donate it. I think that's really helpful to make sure your fabric is finding new life. And I would also just keep a bag of scraps and when a new project comes up when you don't need a lot of fabric or if you need to stuff anything with a filling, then you can just use fabric scraps instead. And then my last tip is to create a sewing notebook. And this is something you can do with any notebook. You can cut out a small section of fabric and then maybe attach a photo or inspiration photos to the page, take notes about the project you're working on, the fabric and the feel, or even have future projects you wanna work on that you're looking for fabric for so that when you go to the fabric store or you're shopping online or you see a sale, you can see what projects you're wanting to work on and what type of fabric you'll need for that. And I just love the visual of this. I think it's so inspiring and I think it can actually yield to a better end product because you're thinking through the whole process of making something even before you're buying the fabric. That's all I have for today. I hope this was helpful in guiding you in the right direction of choosing the perfect fabric for your next project. You can check out my highlights or any links below for some fabric suggestions. I like to go to the big box stores and post suggestions on my Instagram. So I'll see you next week with a new video.